G'day guys, it's been about a week since we took the Convict to uh, Wilby Park to 8 mile drags. Ended up getting second in the um, six cylinder drag class. Came runner up to another bloke from uh, Wagga Wagga where I live, Rob Thorpe. Um, he's actually running the same engine, but instead of blown and methanol, he's, he's on pump fuel and naturally aspirated. And it was quicker than me. I know I've still got a lot of work to do to my engine to get it. I'm um, going as quick as it potentially can, but that's one tough naturally aspirated motor for him to um, take out the wind, so props to you, Rob. Anyway, so it's been about a week. Um, we just bought the car in the shed, sat it in there. Uh, all I've done is take the slicks off and just put some little stockies on. It looks quite funny with the little wheels on the back. Um, yeah, I just took them off because they're continually going flat and um, just driving through oil and stuff on the floor and screws and so um, yeah just get them off for now they're just a 15 by 8 actually 15 by 8 Volvo rim uh, with some 26 26 8.5 by 15 slicks on there uh, the diff in the car is actually a Volvo diff out of like a early 70s um, Volvo and it's got a locker center out of it because they actually share the same diff center as a Dana 30 which is in the front of a Jeep so it's got like an auto Detroit sort of style ratchet locker in the diff and so far it's held up all right but we'll see what happens once we start feeding a little bit more power into it and hopefully it holds up um, anyway yeah I'm just going to jack it up I'm going to we still had issues last week with the um, auto slipping and when I was putting this uh, auto in the car the original dipstick didn't quite fit in the tunnel so I cut it modified it a bit I was pretty sure I left it the same um, length but even when it's showing full we're still having issues with slipping so I just wonder whether I've changed it a bit and the level's not quite right so I plan to drain all the fluid out uh, put it in a nice clean container and then I can measure exactly how much I put in and hopefully put the right amount back in, check the level and dipstick there, then I will know from now on exactly where it's got to be. Um, and I'm also going to check the bands in the gearbox. Uh, Rob was telling me if it's slipping in top gear like it was, it can either be low fluid or the bands might need tightening. So we'll check up online what they're supposed to be, uh, have a look. And um, yeah, see if we can stop this slipping. So once we've got that sorted, the next step is I've got to do a few calculations and get some new blow up pulley um, size to get the boost up a little bit. I'm going to go for about 11 pound boost next, so that should wake it up quite a bit. Anyway, I'll um, get stuck into it. So it's time to do some blower um, ratio calculations and see what size uh, pulleys we need to up this boost and really wake the motor up. So I did some calculations um, earlier, or I'll show you right now anyway, so this is a calculator. Um, the setup at the minute with the serpentine belt, uh, crank pulley is 112 millimetres and blow is 78 so 112 divided by 78 gives me 1.435 ratio so if i put that in now okay um the engine efficiency i probably put at uh, street and strip i'll try and good old design for that one. Uh, engine displacement is a 250 cube with a bit of an overbore, so 254 maybe. Blower displacement is a 177 cube. Um, barometric pressure, I'll just do sea level, which is about 14 psi. Calculate, and we'll just see what that gives us. 11.79, so that's a fair bit more than what um, it was showing. It was only showing about a maximum of about 8. 
So I'll play around with these a bit. Maybe if I go to modern, I'll just see what happens there. No, that's up. Old design, I'll see what happens there. 9.72. Maybe the motor's a bit more efficient than what I thought, so we'll go to there. Alright, good. Old design for the blower. 8.79. It's probably a little bit higher than what it was, but that'll do for now. So, if I got it was showing just under that, so this should all stay pretty constant, as, oh, I think. So if I try moving this around a bit and try like a 1.6, so it gives me 12.25. I'm aiming for a bit higher than that. I'd like to get about 14 or 15, I think. So I'll try 1.65. Thirteen point three two, twelve point seven, fourteen point four. So that might be a pretty good um, ratio to go for. One point seven to one. So um, I'm intending to fit some Gilmer pulleys and a Gilmer belt to it. So it'll be a matter of sort of counting the teeth and finding two pulleys that'll work. Uh, so my plan is to just have a look online at various kits because I looked at pricing the pulleys by themselves and it was ridiculous um, you're looking at a couple hundred dollars a pulley so if I can buy a whole kit for hundred and eighty dollars or so I'll just have a look around and choose a good one that has the right pulleys where it's going to give me the right ratio at some point and um, yeah make it fit so wish me luck. Yeah, hey guys so the cars have been fixed up um, Everything's good, uh, now it's time for the boost upgrade. So I ordered some Gilmer pulleys. I ordered a Gilmer kit to actually fit a Windsor, um, just because of the tooth count was well, gonna be right, about right, I think, for what I needed for the boost. So I've pulled off, um, see here, I've pulled off all the pulleys. Supercharger pulleys go on there. I'm gonna need to do something with this, machine something up. Um, also gonna have to change this and of course the crank pulleys off. This is the old pulley that it was broken um, and this is the Gilman pulley that's going to go there. Of course nothing you can buy will bolt straight on. I thought there was a chance this one might but it won't so um, yeah, to locate it I've got this bit of alloy here so I'm going to machine this bit of alloy so it fits into there so that won't move around and then do the same under here so that holds it true then I'll um, re-drill those bolt holes in the right spot to hold it all on so eventually it'll sit back flush like that and that'll be the first step to get the crank, um, crank pulley mounted and we'll go from there and see what else we can do so I've got a little bit of machine to do We've got a piece that now fits in there. It's got a few holes in it, but you know, it's what I had lying around. It saves me going to buy a new billet of alloy. So that's pretty tight fit in there now. And then once I drill these holes, that will sort of hold it all in there. We'll go and um, give it a little test, just sit it on the crank and see what it's going to look like. Just fits in there, just clears the fan, but that's all it's got to do. Alright, so then we've got to drill three holes. Alright, I'm setting that on zero degrees. Line this hole up where I want it to be. I've got to drill these three holes. 
can't really do it with a drill because it sort of half goes on this piece and this piece here. So the pitch circle diameter is I've measured it's about 62 mil. So I'm just going to get that about right. Close about now, I'll just do them all just a little bit. Okay, I thought I'd let you see what I'm up to. Just finished my crank or oh, um, supercharger pulley. Oh, put the key in there. There we go. I had to actually adapt it to the front of the serpentine bully just to get the spacing right. Um, yeah, for it to sort of line up with the crank bully. Now I've got to figure out how to get this in there. I wasn't sure what I was going to do, whether I try and adapt that one to there, but I don't think it'll give me enough wrap around the. Um, so I might even machine this one flat so it runs on the back of the pulley and try and adapt it to there. I'll have to sort out something else for him. Maybe buy another one of these to hang out here. Not exactly sure yet. <laughs> 